The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Boardman Fire and Rescue District, Oregon, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36212. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks on the passenger and driver's side frame rail. Moving on to the passenger side face of the bumper is where you'll find your electronic siren PA speaker. Just to the driver's side face of the bumper, you'll find dual air horns. As we move up onto the bumper extension, you'll find a tubbed storage location. On the passenger side, D-handle gains you access into this space, along with a swivel front discharge. Moving toward the center, D-handle gains access into the center space, hose storage location. And as we move all the way to the driver's side top section of the bumper, you'll find your mechanical siren. Let's move to the cab face now. On the outer edges, passenger and driver's side, you'll find a marker light indicator. Also, just inside of that location, you'll find the headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. High beam is located on the inside. Just above that, you'll find the turn indicator, marker, and emergency warning light. It's a combination. Moving to the windshield area, you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. And as we move to the outer edge of the mirrors, you'll find a flat and convex mirror controlled from within inside the cab. Moving up to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find the clearance lights. And then just above that, you'll find a brow light forward-facing floodlight. Moving all the way up onto the roof area, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Nestled just behind that light bar is where you'll find your go light, which is a forward-facing directional spotlight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the vehicle. Here's a full view. This is the driver's side. And then let's go ahead and focus now in on the cab area. We'll start first with your front axle. We do have a sight gauge located inside the Alcoa wheels and Goodyear tires. Moving to the bumper extension, you'll find your auto eject shoreline inlet and also a side facing emergency warning light. Just as we move into the step well of the operators area, you'll find an air inlet control module. Moving up onto the door, you'll find an easily accessible with a gloved hand, your door lock and also latch mechanism. Right next to that, you'll find a grab handle for gaining access in and out of the cab. They're on both the front and rear doors. As we move now toward the position behind the driver's seat, D-handle gains you access into this storage location. And directly above that, you'll find a side facing cab scene light. As we move all the way to the rear wall of the cab, you'll find an LED water tank level indicator. And then on the very back of the rear wall, you'll find a pole light with a floodlight located on the very top section. Let's go ahead and move now to the body section. Down at the rear, you'll find two folding wheel chocks. As we move up from that location, you'll find a side facing emergency warning light. And then moving all the way up to the upper right hand corner, a side facing scene light and to the rear of that, a side facing emergency warning light. Let's go ahead and move around now to the rear of the apparatus. We'll identify a few items within this area. First, let's start down at the very bottom section. There is perimeter lo lighting located at the rear. In the very center, there is also a tow location. Moving now to the outer edges, you'll find the emergency brake turn and reverse light. It's a combination on both passenger and driver side. Just up from that location, we have two two and a half inch rear discharges located at the rear section of the wall. Directly in the center, you'll find a recessed backup camera. We also have some warning and caution labels. We'll go over those in just a moment. At the very top left and right side, you'll find emergency warning lights. And then just above that, you'll find your uh, rear facing scene lights. Directly in the center at the very top section of the hose bed area, you'll find a traffic advisor. Let's go ahead and take a look with the cover in the open position. You can see there are four dividers. These are also movable. As we move around now to the passenger side, full view of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and take a look at the body. Same configuration as we have on the passenger as we do on the driver's side, except for our fuel for DEF and uh, diesel fill. 
As we move to the cab section, same configuration as you see on the driver side. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the items we talked about with that front bumper area. As we move to the very passenger side front bumper, you'll find D-handle gains access into the hose storage location for your front discharge. Also locate additional storage in the front bumper area in the very center. And as we move to the outer edge on the driver's side, your mechanical siren. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side where we'll find our Shoreline Inlet. This is a 20 amp auto eject and also an emergency warning light. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the cab. We'll start with the driver's space. First, affixed to the door panel, all of our safety and warning placards. Additionally, you'll find door lock and latch located in the center area. And as we move to the upper right, you'll find manual window controls and also a grab handle. Let's go ahead and move now to the step well of the operator area, driver's space. You can see in the upper left hand corner, we have an air shutoff and then also an air inlet chuck. Let's move to about the right ankle of the operator. You'll find this Pierce manufactured for your department placard. It houses the date of manufacture, the five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating and cold tire inflation. Also included in this is the VIN number and all the fluid and fluid capacity types for each component. Let's move to the floorboard. Just to the left of the brake treadle is where you'll find your mechanical siren foot pedal. And about the left knee of the operator, you'll find your master battery switch quarter turn. And then just to the right, you'll find the engine transmission ABS J1939 diagnostic port. This is for your maintenance team. And then some switches and indicators just below. First, ABS diagnostics, DPF region switch, engine diagnostics switch, and then also region inhibit switch. As we move to the dash panel, on the left, you'll find your start and ignition switch. Just inside of that location, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. This will engage or disengage all emergency warning lights. Headlights, and then also a panel switch, which will allow you to brighten or dim lights within preview of the operator. On the opposite side of the steering column, you'll find your OK to engage the high idle indicator and switch. And as we move up, you'll find your transmission oil, def level, and water temperature. On the right side of the panel, you'll find your front and rear air, fuel, and volts. Located directly in the center, on the left, the tachometer, on the right, the speedometer. Diagnostic information displays above and below the tachometer and speedometer. Let's move just to the right of the steering column, where you'll find your switch panel at the very top section. Let's go ahead and take a look with that. Starting at the very top section on the left, you'll find an air horn selector switch, and then also just to the right, high beam flash, front scene, front scene wide, front scene narrow, and then a front scene spot. Also just beneath that, a red switch, which is the siren brake for your EQ2B mechanical siren. Just down from that, we have an engine brake on and off switch, the settings for low, medium, and high for that uh, engine brake, off-road traction, mirror heat, and load manager. When any of these switches have been depicted, they do have a green indicator indicating that they are illuminating and on. Just to the uh, downward section, you'll find the yellow diamond, which is our pull to apply our system parking brake or push to release. Just down from that, you'll find the Allison transmission pad with an informational note to pump and drive. It is a digital readout push button. Just down from that, you'll also find your flat and convex mirror controls. Climate control for heat, air conditioning, and defrost are also located in the very center section. Just to the right, you'll find driver scene, passenger scene, driver flood, passenger flood, rear scene. Also, just to the far right, you'll find an LED water tank level indicator. Let's move further to the right in the same plane and we'll find some 12 volt power outlets. We have a barrel style and two USB style. Let's go ahead and take a quick look overhead Let's identify a few items on this. Starting to the left, you'll find this yellow placard. Indicates the height of the vehicle, length of the vehicle, gross vehicle weight rating, and also houses the five digit job number. At the very top, you'll find emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Just to the right of this switch panel, you'll find your siren control module and PA speaker module. Let's move further to the right where you'll find your traffic advisor. And as we move uh, all the way to the center section area, you'll find a LED display. This is for your backup camera. Also in the center, you'll find a red flashing light indicating do not move your apparatus. You may have a compartment or door open. 
Also, seatbelt information placard. This is going to display red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green in the seat and belted. General view in the overhead section, we have some push on and off white or red lenses uh, for those lights. And then just behind the driver's seat, you'll find an additional 12 volt bus located at the very rear section of the seat. As we look to the rear, you'll find two SCBA seats mounted on the rear wall. And as we move exterior, you'll find that compartment that's just behind the uh, driver and officer door, shelf, and also LED lighting. Close up here of the Alcoa wheel and Goodyear tire. Let's move to the rear section of the cab. First, let's start with the door panel, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, also door lock and latch, and also manual window controls and a grab handle. Let's look inside. We have 12 volt access via barrel style and USB ports on the passenger and driver side. In the very center, lift and turn latch gains you access to the rear of the engine wheel to your daily checks for oil and transmission. Let's move to the exterior pump panel. On the very upper left hand corner, you'll find two lift and turn latch which gain you access backboard storage location right next to the cross lays. There are two cross lays located in this area, cross lay one and cross lay number two. They are both foam capable. As we move to the main pump area, we'll start in the upper left with a warning regarding uh, entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. As we move to the gray module, you'll find your master intake on the left and master discharge on the right. In between the two of those, you'll find your test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged and these are for testing purposes. As we move to the right, you'll find a warning placard regarding fall. When climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle while climbing. Let's move downward on the pump panel. On the left, you'll find an LED water tank level. It's the blue module. As we move into the red foam system area, this is your Husky foam system. There is information on operating instructions and also foam system instructions. In addition with system specifications, just to the right, you'll find the foam level tank A LED indicator. As we move to the right, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. And then just to the right of that location, you'll find an audible alarm. The outer edge of that bezel does rotate, allowing you to either dampen or brighten the sound. To the right, when properly engaged, you'll find the OK to pump indicator. It is a green indicator, also a switch for panel lights. As we move down, you'll find your discharges are clustered. For example, front discharge and also the cross lays. As we move to the right, deluge discharge. Moving further to the right, you'll find additional gauges. As we move downward, you'll find the two and a half inch discharges for the passenger and driver side. Also, passenger side large diameter discharge is a wheel valve. Let's move just to the right and you'll find at the top section all of our switches for uh, exterior lighting. As we move further down, you'll find the rear discharges, not only for the driver, but for number one, or I should say number B and number A. They are also foam capable. Just to the right, we have an engine cooler. That's a twist, not a pull. And as we move further down, you'll find your fire pump primer, push to prime air. Moving just to the right of that location, tank fill recirculating line and also tank to pump. Let's move down on the next section of the pump panel. We'll find two, two and a half discharges. Also a warning regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. These are the two, two and a half inch discharges on the passenger side. As we move just to the right, the Pierce logo, American flag, and Eagle, this is your large diameter pump inlet. Moving further to the left, this is your minimum operation maintenance schedule for the test pressures of 150, 200, and 250. We'll come back to this placard in a minute. Also regarding warning, only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after they've received proper training. Just beneath that is your driver's side auxiliary inlet. It is a two and a half inch ball valve female inlet. Discharge drains, they are color coded and labeled. And then to the right, we have a warning regarding foam failure. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. Also to the right, you'll find the fill location draft for your foam tank and also an inlet. Let's go back to the Watrous placard in the upper right. This is going to give you information on the actual type of pump you have and its capacity. Moving down, you'll find an additional placard for the minimum operation maintenance schedule. Moving back up, you'll find your manual pump shift. And then just beneath that, you'll find the pump drain to drain all the water within your pump area. Let's move now down and slightly to the left where you'll find your access door behind the pump panel. The yellow handle indicates the foam function and also in the upper right you'll find your foam tank drain. This is a close-up here of the information regarding its operation. 
As we move now, you'll find you have a 1,500 GPM pump, the type of pump model and also transmission. As we move to the minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI, on the left is the associated GPM at test pressure, and on the right, the associated RPM at that specific test pressure. Let's move now just under the diamond plated area where you'll find your manifold drain and driver's side auxiliary inlet drain. Just forward of that location, the foam pump intake drain and foam pump discharge drain. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the compartment at the very top section. You'll find an outlet. This is active when plugged into shore power. It's plugged into the shoreline power for your battery charger. Let's move down in the compartment where you'll find two pull-out trays, the release mechanism on the lower right, and then also an adjustable shelf. As we move to the uh, center compartment area, you'll find a tool board D-handle gain you access. As we look to the rear section of the hinge, this is a lock mechanism allowing to lock the tool board into the open position. As we move downward, you'll find SCBA bottle storage for two SCBAs. This is just in front of the rear axle. Additional strap for bottle security. As we look to the ground, we'll find your Goodyear tires and also Alcoa wheels. Back up to the rear of the axle, single SCBA bottle storage with retaining strap and also ultra low sulfur diesel fill, it's the silver cap. As we move the flap downward, it exposes the 4.5 US gallon DEF tank, which is the blue cap. As we move to the next compartment back, once again, when plugged into shore power, that upper uh, outlet will be active. As we move down, adjustable shelves and LED lighting in your compartments. All the compartments are currently open now on the driver's side. Let's take a look at the passenger side. And now let's go ahead and move around to the rear of the apparatus. Let's go ahead and take a look with all compartments open. You got two in the upper section, rear compartment, and then ladder compartment storage. As we look to the very top section, you'll find D-handle gains you access into these compartments. This is the uppermost left and right side of the truck. Also, you have rear scene lights and hose bed lights act as for uh, turning on or off at the rear of the apparatus. Two two and a half inch discharges, and also regarding a warning label, uh, let's start on the right hand side. Because of the hoses coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. That's why we have this warning placard. Also, fall injury, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. And then just to the right, you'll find an additional warning. If you're climbing on a vehicle, always face the vehicle. And then also, once again, pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. As we move to the very bottom section, you'll find an adjustable shelf. As we move upward, you'll find an additional storage location. This is the upper right side rear. As we move toward the center section, just to the right of that is where you'll find your ladder storage. 24 foot extension, 14 foot roof, 10 foot attic, and then two pike poles. Let's move around now to the passenger side. Once again, that upper corner has an outlet active when shoreline power is plugged in. As we move down, you'll find, once again, pull-out trays. Two located here, one at the very bottom and just one slightly up from that location. Release located on the right side. As we move to the center compartment, you have a tool board located on the rear wall. As we move now into the SCBA storage, there is SCBA bottle storage for three bottles with retaining straps. As we move to the front of the axle, additional SCBA bottle storage and an oxygen bottle storage. Back to the wheel again, uh, just in front of that is where you'll find your exhaust. And extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do exist. Be cautious where you park your vehicle. Let's go ahead and take a look back up into that compartment where we have the tool board located on the rear wall. And then just forward of that location to the next compartment, you'll find adjustable shelves and also a shoreline outlet. There are four locations here for plug-in. Once again, 20 amp when plugged into shore power, these are active. Let's go ahead and move now to the mid section of the apparatus where we'll identify a few items within this area. Let's first start at the very top section. We have a through backboard compartment for your backboard storage. Two lift and turn latches gain you access. Also two cross lays, number one and number two, foam capable. And then also warning regarding entanglement hazard because of those lines coming from aloft. Also we have a warning, just as a reminder, when climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle. And once again, pressure hazard warning. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Also, as we move to the right, you'll find your cab lift. We have instructions for lift and lower and also caution and danger placard information. As we move down to the very bottom, Pierce American Flag Eagle, large diameter passenger side inlet. As we move forward to that location, you'll have a two and a half inch discharge and also your large diameter discharge. At the very bottom section, color-coded labeled discharge drains. 
Let's go ahead and move now into the cab rear section. This is going to be the officer side rear cab doors. Affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placards, also door lock and latch combination, manual window control, and a grab handle. As we move overhead, you'll find your air conditioning unit. Push on and off either red or white lens lights, and then also your speakers. As we move just exterior now, just to the rear of the officer seat, once again, you'll find that compartment. Uh, you'll find adjustable shelf and LED lighting. Moving to the ground level, you'll find Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheels. As we move now into the officer area, first affix the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, and then also manual window controls and a grab handle. Let's move inside now to the floorboard where you'll find a mechanical siren foot pedal. This will activate your EQ2B mechanical siren. As we move to the base of the seat, you'll find additional storage, lift and turn latch gains you access into this space. And then also just to the left of the officer area, you'll find an air horn, siren brake, and also 12 volt access via barrel style. Overhead, you'll find push on or off red or white lenses. As we move to the forward section, you'll find your Panasonic weather band radio. As we move to the seat area, overhead is where you'll find your speakers. And then also, once again, general view of the cab layout at the top section. Let's focus now on the exterior of the cab where you'll find these two placards indicating this is a non-walking surface. That's why we have this is because of the slip hazard. Let's move now to the dunnage area. We'll identify some items here. First, master stream device and also your Husky foam system module. As we move to the master stream device, you'll find your Delu's discharge. It's a wheel valve and then also it does come equipped with an extender gun to elevate the master stream above the cab area. Let's move back now to the Husky foam system. This is the fill location for the hydraulic reservoir. And as we move just to the rear of the cab to the full dunnage area, you'll find the top fill location for your water tank and then also foam A tank. We do have a warning placard on this. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam. Once again, for the possibility of foam failure. Just a general view here of the top section of the hose bed cover, you'll find the yellow diamonds indicating the edge of the walking surface for firefighter safety. Let's take a quick look at the rear section. Once again, four hose bed dividers. They are movable. Now let's go through a series of images with the cab in the upright or tilted position. As we look to the passenger side forward section, this is directly in, uh, below the officer seat. Now just to the rear where you'll find your battery storage location. General view here of the rear section of the pump panel area. Top section of the underside of the cab. We'll now move around to the driver's side. This is directly under the driver's seat. What I would like to point out attached to the frame rail is this bar. When your cab is fully upright, this bar should be placed in position for safety. Just to the rear of that location, you'll find battery location on the driver's side. And then I've got some video here of your vehicle with emergency lights active. Congratulations Boardman Fire and Rescue Oregon on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus. If you have any questions, please contact your Hughes Fire Sales Representative. Thank you and congratulations.